Good morning and welcome to Bloomberg Quint, India's first digital live streaming business news service. I'm Neeraj Shah and you're watching Indian Open. Let's go straight to the headlines at this hour. China's gross domestic product grew 6.4% in the December quarter and 6.6% for the full year, bang in line with estimates. Market regulator SEBI rejects Larson & Two Bros 9,000 crore share buyback, cites a sharp rise in debt to equity ratio if the proposal went through. HDFC Bank's profit rises over 20% in the December quarter, in line with street estimates, asset quality remains stable. And Wipro beat estimates with 35% profit growth aided by a low base. The software giant will issue one bonus share for every three held and one rupee per share interim dividend. And business leaders gathered at the small ski town on Davos in Switzerland for the World Economic Forum. Well, expect this week on Bloomberg Quint and I'm sure other forms of media as well, a bunch of conversations from Davos and the World Economic Forum. So that's something that you should look forward to. A slew of global and local economic and corporate opinion will be available through the week. However, let's tell you what's the lined up for the trade uh, today. And let's, let's bring the trade setup up. It, it is a good week and a good day for the US markets in Friday session. All of the markets ended with a tinge of green, about a percent, percent and a half or thereabouts for almost all of the key markets out there, the S&P and the Dow Jones at least, the Nasdaq to rising about a percent. But what this does is it, it reverses the mood quite considerably from what was the mood in December. If you look at what the S&P 500 has done in the last, well, maybe three and a half or four weeks, is reversed a considerable amount of losses that had come in in the month of December. I remember it was the worst Christmas Eve and the headlines thereof. From there, we've bounced back quite considerably as the graph shows as well. So the sentiment around the equity markets has returned quite considerably, which is actually a good sign. Um, is this having an impact on the Asian screen? Well, marginally so. Nikkei is up about half a percent, Shanghai about half a percent, the SGX Nifty indicating a start which is marginally in the green. And, you know, Shanghai and Hang Seng haven't really gone off too much after the Chinese GDP data came out because while it came out at the lowest pace in multiple years, it's come out exactly in line with what the estimates were suggesting. So 6.6% is bang on in line with estimates. So no big reactions thereof on the world markets and in terms of policy as well. I would reckon what was anticipated on the easing, etc., etc., Will happen nothing too dramatic what about our markets well the nifty thus far has defended the 10,900 level uh, quite admirably even though it's been choppy a lot of individual casualties the likes of sun pharma bharti atl has happened despite all of that the index has held on to the 10,900 level um, the problem has been the nifty bank it's been very very sluggish and it's not been given the kind of support to the nifty that it needs now can HDFC Bank results and maybe Kotak Bank, if it comes up with a good set of numbers, help propel the Nifty Bank higher today? Would, would that give a bit of a leg up? The much needed leg up that the Nifty needs remains to be seen because keep in mind that IT could be under a bit of cloud because as we spoke about in Friday's session as well, while it's gaining and it gained in Friday's trade too, it is nearing some resistance levels and that might stop giving the support that the Nifty needs. So very important for the Nifty Bank to start performing. Nifty IT is certainly not performing and while there is long formation seen in a bunch of of these IT names, well, very, very interesting to see what happens uh, now that two or three, now that a bulk of the good results are out of the way and there are very little cues to look forward to. We look forward to HCL tech numbers, yes, but that isn't exactly index moving in terms of a stock. We'll watch out for Wipro though in the session today. Uh, what, what should we watch out for in the session today? By the way, as I said, Kotak Mahindra Bank, the numbers are out, so important to watch out for. And the mid caps now start coming in full steam. This week, a clutch of mid caps come out with numbers for today's session. Very important numbers, HDFC, AMC, important to monitor what happens there and whether the slowdown in the fund flows has had an impact on their income or no in the quarter. LNT Finance Holdings, every NBFC has important, this one more so, and Saskin Technologies again. A very volatile mid-cap counter when it comes out with good or bad numbers, so important to watch out for what it does in the session today. However, what are the stocks that you should watch out for on market open? I think three or four names, aside of HDFC Bank, which we already spoken about and which we'll speak about on first word immediately, Wipro is the other one that we should watch out for. The operating performance, yes, beat estimates, but the Q4 guidance of 0.02% was lower than the estimate of 1% to 3%, so do watch out for that. I'm sure Agam will speak about it a bit later on. Uh, the Economic Times is reporting that SEBI has issued the notice to Raymond, a show cause notice alleging multiple securities market val violations. This is an Economic Times report. Uh, we do not have it, 
but likely that the stock could react. So important to highlight that. Again, one more report that is coming in the business line. Again, we do not have it, but apparently the SFIO has demanded license of the bank, DCB bank to be canceled. Again, a stock that could likely react. I repeat, Bloomberg Quinn does not have either of these two reports, but they've been reported in the media and therefore the stocks could react. So do watch out for these names. Um, LNT, SEBI's advised against the 9,000 crore buyback offer. You've got to keep this at the back of your mind. It's not an outright rejection, but you would presume that if SEBI's advised, then it won't go ahead. Uh, interesting to see what happens to Larson and Tubro in the session today. CLSA's note seems to suggest that they could announce a special dividend as well this week itself. So it'll be interesting to see how LNT reacts in the session today. It was a mixed quarter for Z-Learn because while the revenue growth was strong, margins really cracked and it'll be interesting to see if Z reacts negatively to that margin cracking down or no and amongst the telephone subscriber data that has come out Vodafone idea stood out for me active subscriber base uh, was about uh, reduced by 2.3 lakhs to 39 and a half crores but this is the fall in the subscriber base for the seventh straight month for Vodafone idea they have a board meet to raise funds as well a few days from now the weakness could it persist in the session today one would reckon yes However, let's tell you what's lined up on First Word today. It's the collection of the top editorial stories that we believe we should bring to you first up. What helped HDFC Bank report a strong set of numbers at a time when the financial sector struggled? Darshan Mehta will tell us. Sajid Bangat then will explain Sebi's rationale in advising against LNT's buyback proposal. Darshan will also take a deep dive into Apollo Hospital's business to understand why it rallied when the peers stumbled. And then S. Kannan will look into an unusual trade happening in the futures and options market on the Nifty 50 index. Start off though with the country's largest private lender by market cap, which reported earnings on Saturday, HDFC Bank delivered a 20% growth, profit growth that is, and stable asset quality, once again, you would say not surprised. Darshan Johnson with the key takeaways from the numbers and if brokerages have said anything meaningful. Darshan, good morning. Good morning, uh, Neeraj, and, and, and as usual, it's a 20% earning growth. So, so and, and you know, a lot of WhatsApp forwards going that, you know, uh, Arya Bhatta invented zero and HDFC Bank invented <laughs> 20%. So I, I think it was expected. Uh, they've come in line, 22% NI growth, 20% uh, profit growth. Uh, uh, the only blip was uh, asset quality slightly weakened, not too much. Uh, uh, 1.38 versus 1.3. 3 QOQ or that was a GNPA and 0.42% versus 0.4% and that was because of issues in the agri business so it will be very important now to note what happens with the farm loan waivers that come in but still best in, in the class uh, asset quality as far as HDFC bank is concerned core NIMS at 4.3% uh, uh, in line with estimate but that also at the higher end of the guidance with the management had suggested so overall both on the corporate side uh, and as well as the retail side, there was broad-based growth that came in. Uh, overall, earnings were slightly impacted by higher contingency provisions this time around. Uh, the core fee uh, traction and control OPEX aided the core profitability for the bank. Uh, agri slippages, as I said, was something that impacted the asset quality of the company. So it will be important to see what happens uh, at the end. And there was no divergence reported by the bank uh, as compared to what uh, the RBI has stated. So that was positive. Overall, brokerages have been positive uh, they have said a uh, fairly st set of stable set of numbers Edelweiss has raised the target price on the company to 25.30 they went in a buy and they are saying because of slackening competition uh, HDFC is the prime beneficiary and will gain from market churn and rising power pricing power from the as compared to the others uh, JP Morgan is saying that loan growth at 24 percent remains solid and X agri uh, the asset quality remains largely stable so agri and that a uh, slight impact on the NPA uh, probably was the only worry but apart from it uh, but textbook uh, HDFC bank everything in line I think brokerages by and large seem, seem fairly sanguine as well. Yeah, they are. They are saying that, you know, what uh, what the other banks are going through, there is a high probability that, you know, business will come to HDFC Bank because of the weakness in other banks. So that's what they're saying. Yeah, well, interesting set of numbers and uh, don't quite know if the stock reacts too dramatically or no because it's our textbook, as Darshan said, exactly in line with the estimates. <coughs> interesting what's up yeah. forward as well, Darshan. Thanks for yeah. bringing us that. So HDFC Bank, it is the big boy, uh, will not react negatively if, uh, if that's the mild way to put it. Let's see how positively it reacts if it does. Uh, okay, let's also try and figure out if LNT will react because SEBI has advised against LNT's proposal to buy back shares worth up to 9,000 crore rupees. The market regulator said that the consolidated debt to equity ratio will be more than two times if the offer was allowed to go through, leading to a breach in regulations. The company, on the other hand, maintains that it had applied on a standalone basis and the SEBI's regulations do not insist on consolidated numbers. Sajid Johnson for more. Sajid, good morning. Good morning. 
you know uh, we've been tracking this lnt buyback for at least uh, last two weeks and uh, last week we reported that you know it's stuck with sebi now sebi on friday came out with a, a note uh, or guidance to lnt not to proceed with the buyback and the reason they gave was on a consolidated basis the debt to equity ratio crosses two hmm. uh, two times uh, equity uh, so what uh, sebi is basically trying to say is that you know when you look at lnt as a consolidated entity mm -hmm. uh, you know its en its entire debt has to be look looked at, at and not on a standalone basis mm. the company had proceeded with the buyback based on a standalone financials and you know standalone financials is well below 1 uh, but when you bring in the consolidated its uh, finance arm comes into the picture and that accounts for nearly 50% of of the consolidated debt and that's the reason why uh, the debt equity ratio goes crosses two hmm. two, uh, two times there uh, it also, uh, uh, also is also an indication from the regulator that going forward the regulator will look at uh, these consol uh, consolidated uh, entities or con conglomerates mm -hmm. from a consolidated level mm -hmm. and now now this is coming in from the island of uh, fiasco because in the island of fiasco island of was always considered uh, stand alone and so the debt level of the group was not known for the for the, for the world in large so while the regulator is asking rating agencies and other agencies to look at entities on a consolidated level so that all the subsidies or the key arms are factored in as part of the uh, uh, ratios uh, it is also following the same rule here and so someone um, the company can argue that the regulations are, are not clear with respect to whether it should be stand alone or consolidated but the regulator is very clear that go henceforth if you are going to be a consolidated entity or for that matter uh, a conglomerate we will look at you on a consolidated basis to see whether you your parameters are su sufficient enough to go ahead with uh, cases like a buyback hmm. and that's uh, what the regulator is saying now i've seen analyst notes uh, they've been saying that they should go and appeal against sebi because the regulations are not clear but i'm not sure whether the regulator will uh, you know agree to that kind of thing because ultimately it's up to subject to we are in a times where uh, consolidated entities go for a toss because uh, you know market is not looking at now rating agencies look look at lnt from a consolidated point of view when they, when they put out put out a rating so why shouldn't the regulator be doing the same thing so yeah the point is that buyback is not going to happen going forward unless lnt uh, you know tomorrow says that okay i'm going to bring down the stake in lnt finance below 50 so that it does not come under consolidated hmm. but that's a long uh, long drawn process but in the meantime they'll go for a dividend and again the, the cost of dividend will be high because you have to pay a dividend distribution tax uh, that again will be taken out of from the con from the cls seems to believe that there are large special dividend that could come in in order to boost the roe that's true. Uh, they are talking about 53 rupees a share. Uh, uh, the point is that even if you at at 53 rupees a share, you will have to pay nearly 10 uh, 10 rupees as dividend distribution tax. So you know, I don't know whether they will get uh, the shareholders will get 53 or is the total outgo which is there because at the end of the day, the dividend dividend distribution tax is taken uh, directed from the company and not from true. the shareholders. Yeah, but the point is, if for a company, if if it is indeed true that they're obsessed with the ROE and they want the ROE levels to stay high, and if the buyback is not going through, is dividend the only option left for Alasan and Tubro? It is the only option left for Alasan and Tubro. There is no other way out. And remember, the government was also trying to you know cash in uh, on the buyback because it had 1.8 percent stake. Uh, Suti held that stake, and they wanted to be part participate in buyback. Now they will also have to look uh, relook at that. 1,800 crores which they were planning to get from LNT buyback. That's a setback for government as well. But point is, the point is, the regulator is being now very strict, uh, and it's going forward. It's going to put in uh, uh, things in for at least the large companies and systematic, uh, systematically large com uh, important companies like LNT, uh, so that you know you're not. Uh, take giving away cash when you are not supposed to because on a consolidated level LNT still has uh, LNT finance though the loans are not guaranteed by LNT but it still is on a consolidated b uh, basis is part of the balance sheet of LNT so the, it's going to be a tough thing for the board to decide now uh, whether they should go for a higher dividend or they should try to bring down the dependence or, uh, or bring down uh, unconsolidate LNT finance from the, there but again, okay. that requires LNT Finance growth path and uh, how LNT Finance is able to raise funds going forward.
Okay, let's wait and watch what happens here. Sajid, thanks for putting that into perspective. Uh, important points there. Uh, dividend comes with its own uh, baggage as well. Let's wait and watch if indeed that comes about. CLSI, as I said, believes that uh, a large dividend is in order from LNT side, according to them, as early as this week. Let's wait and watch. Okay, so those are the two. And we'll talk about Wipro a bit later on as well because the numbers came out post marketers on Friday, so well digested. I will make a mention of them a bit later on. The next two pieces on first word, uh, not near immediacy, but more on some interesting trades and events that have happened. Now, first, healthcare. Now, even in most healthcare stocks are under the weather, the big country's biggest hospital chain, Apollo Hospitals, remains resilient. So are the fundamentals truly superior? Are the new hospitals that Apollo has built starting to pay off? Dashan is standing by uh, to tell us what Apollo has that others seemingly don't. Yeah, so basically what happened is Apollo's now come off after a large capex, which the others are going through. So the probability that the others will start, you know, improving their financials will probably take some time. But Apollo is that, if you look, look at the returns that, uh, you know, Apollo has given as compared uh, to the peers, that's certainly superior. So on a one-year basis, uh, when the other hospitals have given you negative returns, Apollo Hospitals is up 20%. No doubt this year also on a YTD basis, just some 20 days, uh, Apollo hospital has given is risen almost 9% uh, and look at this all the other IPOs that came out or the other hospitals that came out with IPO be it an Astadium, Astadium it's not even one year full, uh, so Astadium, Healthcare Group and Narayana shall be, all of them are trading below the issue price uh, Fortis is almost 70% uh, it, it is yet to recover before it hits its lifetime high and Apollo Hospitals is just 13% away from a record high on the counter, so, the, so there's just one hospital that seems to be doing well, in a sector which is clearly underperforming so that's the trend that we've seen on Apollo hospitals now if you look a look at what's uh, what why firstly let's talk about the healthcare sector and why is it not doing well and then we'll talk about why Apollo is doing well first of all the bed additions are extremely slow this time around the new beds that have come out uh, the CAGR is extremely low uh, there is an oversupply of bed in some clusters and that is affecting a lot of hospitals this time around uh, subdued occupancy levels according uh, to a lot of reports that came out so and the commentary is not that uh, uh, that good because of competition the average revenue per occupied bed also falls significantly uh, rising real estate rates are something that is impacting the yields for a lot of hospitals uh, apart from it uh, CLSA came out with a note saying that the new hospital edition uh, in FY18 was just 3% compared to a 9% CAGR over FY19 to FY13 to 17 so you can clearly see uh, the slowdown that is there uh, weak profitability uh, drives consolidation in a lot of hospitals. You've seen a lot of m &A that has happened uh, with uh, Fortis and IHH and with Radiant uh, that acquired the Max hospitals that came out. And regulatory risk uh, are, are the universal issues. Even Apollo, if you see last year uh, or the year before, they were also affected significantly. Regulatory risk in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the stent price cap or the knee caps that came out and then there were price caps that came in. So those are some things that are impacting the uh, hospital sector. Now, what happened with Apollo and why is it uh, outperforming? First of all, the capex is complete for the company. Uh, new hospitals are turning around except for one hospital. All of the other hospitals, even the newer ones are EBITDA break even. So that is something that is working. <coughs> There is a market share focus on the mature hospitals. While the new hospitals are turning around, the mature hospitals or the old hospitals are now focusing on market share and they are gaining market share. So that is doing. Their biggest hospital, uh, the Mumbai facility to post EBITDA gains in FI19. Uh, so they've already uh, already uh, uh, become EBITDA break even and they will start now posting gains uh, uh, from FI19. So that is something that is helping them. Narrowing losses at Apollo Health and Lifestyle. This is the retail business that is there and the Losses have come down significantly for them. We have a chart and we'll show you later what has there. And the pharmacy as business has been split into a separate company, which actually creates a lot of shareholder value. So they, there are some of the things that have happened and that is something that is impacting Apollo Hospitals. Now, if you're looking a look at what's happening with Apollo Hospitals, the margins uh, for Apollo Hospitals on the existing ho hospitals are stable. Uh, but if you're looking at what's happened here, uh, and this is, uh, the, this is the Apollo Healthcare uh, AHH, from a negative 61 percent EBITDA margin have now moved into a minus three percent that is there and the new hospitals from EBITDA break even have started posting uh, profits for them so clearly the trend certainly seems to be shifting if you see the second quarter numbers that came out so it's certainly positive for Apollo hospitals so that's the general trend uh, that you need to watch out for okay. what do you watch out 
Okay, fair call. I was just wondering uh, that how do the valuations stack up and what do you watch out for, Darshan? Yeah, so basically if you're looking at what do you watch out for and the valuations that come out, uh, uh, we can have uh, the valuation uh, stack. Uh, first of all, what do you watch out for? Uh, profitability improves with a lower capex, so that is something that will benefit. Uh, the capex is over, hardly some working capital capex will be there, which will be manageable by Apollo Hospital. Uh, if new uh, hospital, we need to watch out if the new hospitals break even, even post-expansion. So that is something that we need to watch out for Apollo Hospital. Uh, the third part that we need to watch out is overcoming regulatory issues and that's common for all the hospitals this time around uh, and finally possible consolidation among hospitals and this is also something that works across uh, the screen for, for, for the hospital. Valuation wise no doubt Apollo Hospitals is expensive not as expensive as Fortis but compared to the other it continues to remain expensive and it will remain expensive given the strong financial performance and the capex that is over for the counter. What are brokerages saying? No doubt a lot of brokerages have a positive view on Apollo Hospitals. Almost 21 have a buy, no sells, but the return potential because of the up move that is there is just 5%. Uh, the others have actually underperformed, uh, even though there are buy recommendation and hardly any kind of sell recommendation. Uh, the potential upside in the other hospitals is still high because the target price haven't been revised and the counters have come down. But the clear choice as of now, despite a 5% only potential upside, still remains Apollo Hospitals uh, with the street. Well, I hope the analyst on Shalbi gets it right for his <laughs> brokerage's sake, Darshan. 82% yeah. return potential. But interesting analysis on Apollo. Thanks so much. That's arguably all that you needed to know about Apollo Hospitals and why it's done what it has done and what the way ahead could be like. The last piece on First Word today is about an unusual trade that took place in the futures and options market last week. Someone bought options to buy the Nifty 50 at 5,000 in June this year. Now, that's less than half the current value of the benchmark index. A call contract, remember, gives the holder the option to buy the security at a predetermined price, but there is no obligation. Market experts say one should not read too much into this particular call S. Kandan Johnson to talk about the trade in greater detail and Kandan, why would somebody do that because it's a no-brainer that uh, the nifty will not go down that path. Uh, yes, so these are deep in the money call option you know where the strike price is significantly below the, the current market price um, and if you see this you know someone has talked up you know the, with the magnitude and the quantity of you know June 5000 call which is the the next month you know to the the May 2019 election results, right? So that is why this becomes quite interesting to kind of, you know, uh, do a further analysis. Um, so such contracts are not unusual in India, right? So large institutions do this, you know, for uh, uh, edging their, you know, long only book. And at the same time, you know, some structured product desk, you know, um, on the wealth management firms, you know, try to do some structured deal, you know, using those options. But what makes this deal, you know, quite interesting is two things. One, on 27th December, uh, the open interest jump that we have witnessed is close to 6.5 lakh shares, right? And this is 50% of the, the total open interest that as we speak today, right? So 50% of open interest jumped on a one single day with an aggregate you know, value of 350 crores is huge, right? So what could be the possibilities? So we kind of you know, figured out you know, there could be three possibilities you know, for doing such rational. So one could be the, uh, the one possibility given the structure is, uh, it could be a way of extending your loan. So, um, so technically this is called derivative trade financing. Right, so this was so prevalent in 2007 and 8. You know, whenever there was a tight liquidity situation, and you know, people used to kind of you know, do this analysis. So what does that mean? So as a buyer or a financier, so I buy the option from the exchange, right, from the seller, right. So I transfer the money, you know, from me to the seller via the exchange platform. So that credits into the, the broker's account of the seller. So now the seller can freeze, you know, cash that is uh, with the broker so that you can use this credit as a collateral you know, for a state activity. And this happens on a predetermined uh, you know, rate. And since this is a six months contract, the settlement happens at the end of the six months. So th um, the rate could be like one to two percent per month, the rate of interest, you know, depending upon the, the liquidity condition uh, and the pre-agreed terms. Mm. Right? So this is one possibility. Um, the second possibility could be uh, as a part of the structured deal, as I said. Right? So large institution and wealth management used to do this. So what is the logic for this? Right? So if you see the intrinsic value of 5,000 call, it is traded below 5%, you know, more than 5% on that particular day, which is December 27th. So for a long only guy, let's say if I am bullish on, you know, Indian equities and I wanted to bet on Indian market, so what are the various avenues? One, I can go and buy an index fund or an ETF. The other way to do is to buy a deep in the money call option, which is trading 5% below the intrinsic value. So instead of, you know, locking in, let's say, 8 lakhs, you know, for a long only, you know, fund, so I kind of, you know, pay only for close to around 4 lakhs 
and the remaining pocket in the arbitrage fund or a debt fund, so that generates an extra yield of you know seven percent per annum, right? So in a, in a sense, like even if Nifty goes up. 10, 11 percent, or you know, falls by 10, you know, 11 percent because of this 5 percent discount to the intrinsic value, the structure outperforms. So, in a sense, you know, if Nifty, let's say, uh, uh, closes at 12,000 at the end of you know, 27th of June, uh, so the gain could be 15 percent versus um, the index fund return of mm. you know, 11 percent. Similarly, on the downside, if the market comes to, let's say, hypothetically to 10,000 on 27th of June, so this would be. Uh, you know, so long only guy uh, will be losing like close to eight percent, whereas because of this five percent, you know, kind of discount, uh, the structure would end up, you know, losing only three percent. So in a sense, it's a risk-adjusted, you know, return which is quite superior to the the typical long only guy. Sure. So the third possibility that uh, we kind of you know figured out is, uh, which is quite popular in Mumbai as well. Um, is you know adjusting their you know books, right? Hmm. So this deal <laughs> happened on 27th, which is uh, on the end of the last quarter, hmm. right, on the expiry day. Um, so uh, typically companies with you know as a related party transaction you know does this deal you know so in order to adjust their you know business income and losses you know so they kind of you know buy the uh, options to show that as an expense in one book and then you know um, the credit as an income in in other books so such kinds of deals are you know uh, you know quite prevalent you know uh, you know for taxation you know point of view. Uh, so these are the three possibilities that kind of we can think out, and given that the magnitude that 50 percent, you know, on one particular day, um, so this makes an interesting uh, you know, proposition to watch out for. Okay, as Kannan said, don't read too much into it because it's not a pure play call on the index, but there could be more to it. And I hope you heard this and got some ideas about it as well. Unusual trades which raise an eyebrow, but there could be more than just pure market uh, linked uh, factors at play here. Kannan, yeah. thanks for bringing this yeah. to us. And the story, of course, there on our website as well, bloombuckwin.com. So I urge you to go and do read it. It's a very interesting uh, piece of information, not necessarily a call on the markets, as we said. That's all that we have on First Word today, though. Uh, lots more lined up uh, for you and in Indian Open. Telecom operators are yet to recover from their competitive pressures triggered by Geo. We talked to Nitin Sony of Fitch Ratings about all of this. Discuss the business outlook with BM Gupta of TFC after it's got the RBI approval for change in management control. And after this break, though, a full tilt towards the day's trade. One way to do that is to collect and celebrate the life lessons of those people. Deepak Ramola, the man behind Project Fuel. Fuel stands for Forward the Understanding of Every Life Lesson. His audacious mission is to immortalize the wisdom of as many people as possible. One thing I was absolutely sure about, I don't want it to be a quote on the wall. I want people to experience so the experiential part is where we use different tools and mechanisms to create one act, and the act is of making lives count. Watch his exceptional story, Pursuit by Skoda, only on Bloomberg Queen. This is a show which gets you a complete wrap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. Everyone's a price taker, not a price maker out there. There are better opportunities in the marketplace. The return ratios will improve, margins will improve. What are you seeing? Valuations are extremely expensive. It would take 100 years of profits to really pay off the entire debt. Not all good businesses are good investments. Good return on equity could be expected. And I think that will sustain. Their numbers, etc., were pretty sluggish. How much longer they can sustain, I'm not too sure. It has never been the scenario with any of the stocks. It's an avoid for him at this point of time. I wouldn't write it off in such a hurry. We're getting into more complex chemistry. Join me as I navigate the hottest stocks and help you pick the right stock at the right time.
Welcome back. You're watching In An Open right here on Bloomberg. Quint, it's going to be an interesting start to the week. Last week wasn't bad at all, in fact, a percent on the indices. But what disappointed was the lack of support that came in from the banks. They, yeah. they stood absolutely flat in a week that the indices pulled up about a percent or so. Yeah, you summed it up. Uh, essentially, the banks need to give support for the Nifty to move higher because we defend at 10,900. Yeah. But if HDFC Bank numbers, if they do, and if Kotak Bank numbers turn out to be well, then maybe you have support because remember, IT yeah. might not give support. Well, last week was a real bumper week for IT, 4.5% higher. So you wonder how much legroom is left on the upside to take that stretch forward for IT. And particularly, it's the big, big boys that uh, did what they had to do. Now, with the mid cap IT numbers slotted to come out, uh, you're going to see whether they can actually replicate what the larger names did. True. Sure. Well, let's see what happens then. This week's going to be an interesting take. Let's now look at what happened in the futures and options space. We've got Agam Bakil who's standing by right now to run us through the futures and options setup. Agam, good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, last week was uh, largely range bound for the indices and Friday wasn't any different considering the way we saw your underlying pan out. But uh, given those circumstances, when it comes to your open interest, uh, there has again been very little change in the nifty futures. The nifty banking futures, however, have seen considerable unwinding with a near 5% decline in open interest. The India Volatility inde uh, Index has advanced by around 2.3% to above the mark of 16.6, but it's still at uh, lower levels. Uh, what has, however, changed is your lower end of the range for the Nifty, which has shifted from the 10,500 mark to the 10,700 mark, based on maximum open interest inputs. And on the higher end, it is still the 11,000 mark. Uh, we have seen a lot of unwinding coming through last Friday, given this big change, uh, especially when it comes to 11. 11,000 and 11,100 calls. Uh, but to talk about the Nifty put call ratio, that's edged up higher to around 1.56, and then if we bank Nifty banking put call ratio at around 1.14, and uh, we have Adani Power and Jet Airways, which continue to remain in the FNO band. Also, taking a look at uh, your other stocks, we have Sun Pharma and Sun TV, which were under immense pressure. A lot of shorts building up there. Apollo Hospitals, on the other hand, uh, did see some amount of uh, well gains coming through with Long's building. And in terms of unwinding, we have stocks like BHEL, DC Bank, and SPI, uh, which did see considerable uh, decline in open interest. Of course, uh, DCB Bank will again be in focus on the back of news today. But another mixed day of trade when it comes to some of these stocks. Uh, and uh, we're likely to see a continuation of that trend as we move into today. Well, thanks a lot for that, Agam. We'll watch out for that. <clears throat> At some point of time, we'll of course try and talk to DCB Bank as well. It's a business line a report, Hindu business line report, which speaks about how <clears throat> SFIO wants the DCB Bank license cancelled. We'll be interesting to see if DCB Bank indeed has even gotten any intimation about the same or no, and what is their response. So that's something that we'll talk about. We'll also talk about Raymond. Mm -hmm. um, and with that stock being in news, and then of course the result boys, HDFC Bank, Wipro, and the likes. And whether or not L&T, &T. yeah. So L&T, whether or not that gap, you would expect that gap down opening. Uh, obviously, they're talking about a 53 rupees per share dividend. CLSA is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so whether that provides a little bit of a buffer to uh, the stock price or no, because a lot of people had actually bought uh, when the buyback was announced in hopes of tendering it and making that. That, that quick money but uh, now that this has happened whether or not you see uh, some more selling pressure building up around the stock but nonetheless it's a solid stock to have in the portfolio it's a blue chip large cap name which is probably uh, you know uh, hardly ever disappointed shareholders in terms of its uh, earnings performances so you're going to watch out for that and whether or not it takes a toll on the stock this time around Avinash Gurakshekar is joining in right now good morning Avinash uh, let's take the conversation forward for l and then I mean uh, SEBI advising against the buyback, uh, is that going to be a damn squib? Uh, exactly. I think you rightly mentioned that a uh, lot of people had uh, actually bought uh, LNT, uh, you know, due to the buyback. And I think now this 9,000 crore buyback being cancelled is definitely uh, a negative news flow. And I would believe that, you know, the company would at best try to compensate it by giving some, uh, you know, a, a bigger dividend. But then that uh, obviously would involve some sort of a tax outflow for them. Uh, our sense is that uh, in the near term, I think the stock could possibly see a little bit of pressure considering the fact that this news was not uh, completely anticipated by the markets. And now since it's come out, uh, I would believe that, yes, the stock could open a little weak, but probably at lower levels, you know, one could look at buying this because uh, our sense is that the order book continues to be strong 
and uh, obviously Q3 numbers are going to be pretty solid. So I think overall the market's focus would then go get back to earnings. But overall, I think this news flow is negative, Neeraj. What about DCB Bank? What did you make of the news? I think uh, Neeraj, unless it's not news, as yeah, it's, it's, it's a newspaper not news. Report. I think I think uh, definitely the stock would open weak, but uh, unless and until uh, you know there are some material facts which actually uh, justify uh, DCP's. Okay. Avinash, since we're talking about DCB Bank, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I think we've got the management uh, because newspaper report. One of the newspaper reports suggests that the SFI wants the bank's license cancelled over dealings in the NSAL scam. Bank, I believe, has denied any such involvement. Mr. Murli Natarajan, MD and CEO of DCB Bank, joins us right now on the phone line. Mr. Natarajan, good having you. Thanks so much for speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint. Uh, yes. This newspaper speaks about they having access to a report uh, which they have seen. Have you, uh, have you been able to see any kind of uh, report by SFIO? We have clearly mentioned in our stock holding, uh, stock exchange, uh, uh, you know, declaration that we are not privy to any report between SFIO, MCA and RBI, number one. Second point is, in October 2017, I hope I'm getting the month right, uh, we had received, for, uh, we had to submit some information to SFIO, which we did. Since then, to the best of our knowledge, we have not received any communication directly from SFIO. Hmm. So uh, as seen by Business Line, and that's what they mentioned, uh, they're saying that in the report it says that DCB was neither authorized nor did take clearance from the RBI for an agreement with India and for line uh, commodities to enter into an agreement to encourage the bank's clients to roll uh, with IICL. So any comments Let on that? Let me clarify. Let me clarify. Yeah. First of all, we have relied upon master circular of RBI on para banking of 2011 which we believe permits bank to refer customer for third party products okay number one number two it does not the para banking circular does not talk about a specific approval to be obtained from reserve bank of india second point i would like to say is our agreement with iacl was to provide customers access to commodity trading across mcx nctx and any other entity approved by FMC. There is no specific agreement for NSCL. The National Spot Exchange Limited, there is no specific approval. I mean, say a specific uh, agreement. It is all covered in this. So we never entered into a specific agreement with uh, IACL for uh, NSCL. Okay. Then second point I would like to say is the way we were choosing our customer is that we had a risk profiling process. We used the risk profiling process and customer was chosen. On a day-to-day -day basis, whatever trade or investment was being made by the customer, they were doing it directly with IICL. The bank did not have any role to play. The, uh, the risk, there is no risk participation by the bank. Customer was doing it on their own risk based on inputs received from IICL. That is how the agreement was. Okay. Mr. Antarajan, would you believe that even if a report like this did exist, because I'm guessing if the newspaper has filed it, they would have seen something to this effect. Even if uh, such a report has been filed, um, what happens next then? I mean, should, should a report like this would have come up? I mean, would, I believe there will be legal recourse have, that you, know, you would see. It's very difficult for me to, uh, without having any information, I, wouldn't, I don't want to speculate on uh, such matters. Okay. Would you? And, Okay. Yes. I'm just wondering, sir, since you, since the time you would have gotten the hint of this of this newspaper article, would you have yes. or will you try to reach out to, to see if such a report has indeed come out as well or no? So, if there was indeed such a situation, uh -huh. I am sure regulators would follow due process and we will follow the due process, uh, you know, as prescribed by the regulator for sorting this matter out. All right. Uh, Mr. Natarajan, thanks very much for joining thanks in yeah. and clarifying uh, that for us. So the bank there categorically denying any uh, involvement in this. And they have not received any communication either uh, from the SFIO. Yeah, you would reckon that the stock though could start off slightly negatively today. But mm -hmm. I think uh, Mr. Muli Natarajan sounded fairly confident of they following the legal course uh, yeah. whenever this yeah. development happened in the past as well. But let's wait and watch. It's a complicated matter, so I, I'm, I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to, I don't know if you would want to, but I want to hazard a guess about whether 
um, such a thing is possible and if SFI would indeed ask for such a development or no, to be honest. But Abhinash, sorry, you were making the point before we cut you, you now heard the management as well. What would be your thoughts be? No, I think uh, as you rightly mentioned, you know, I think unless and until there is some uh, clarity and uh, actual uh, fructification of the facts, I would not be surprised that beyond a certain level, you know, DCPA is one of those banks which has presented a very solid set of numbers. So I would believe that, yes, I think in the near term, you know, this news flow uh, will have a little dampener on the stock price. But in the medium term, I think, you know, if this news flow is not uh, right and uh, probably, you know, if the, once the dust settles down, I think you could possibly see a lot of buying coming down maybe at lower levels. Okay, that's on DCB Bank. Uh, Avinash, just stay on with us. We've got lots more to talk about, but uh, let's go across to our research team now. They're standing by patiently to, to run us through with all the stocks and news. We've got some brokerage calls, uh, some earnings to watch out for. So we've got Nikki, Yash, Agam, Somit, all of them here with us. Nikki, let's start off with you. Alliance Infra, where Delhi High Court has uh, set aside a rupees 4,500 crore arbitration award, which was earlier awarded in the favor of company's subsidiary, and this relates to Delhi Airport Metro project. So we might just expect some kind of downtick coming in the counter, though the company has said that it's going to be challenging the order which has come through. Vodafone Idea, the board is going to be meeting on Jan 23rd to consider fundraising option. Earlier, the company said that it's going to be evaluating fundraising, fundraising option to the tune of around 25,000 odd crore via equity. DCB Bank, uh, where we just spoke briefly about it, and also we're looking at IDBI Bank, where Supreme Court has agreed to hear a plea against LIC buying 51% stake in IDBI Bank. A financial Express a report, and the total value of the deal is expected to be in the range of around 12 to 13,000 odd yeah. crore. Uh, we'll also be tracking in Raymond, where uh, it's an ET report which suggested that SEBI has has issued a show cause notice uh, to Raymond, uh, which is uh, uh, which is alleging uh, which alleges uh, multiple securities market violation against the company. It says that the company has not taken necessary approvals for related party transaction, which involves the lease of a JK house. Uh, separately, we are also looking at Mindtree, where an ET report suggests that LNT Infotech may line up is lining up to acquire VG Siddhartha's stake in Mindtree, and uh, Siddhartha is determined mind to sell his stake by month end and has sought binding offers from all the suitors this coming week. All right, Nikki, thanks very much. Well, that's a quite a lot of long list there. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some numbers that came out and then we talk about the numbers that are going to come out today. So, Vipro, Agam, let's start off with you. Uh, yeah, that's a big uh, yeah. Yeah, one, of course, after HDFC Bank. So, uh, well, we've seen a, 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 an uptick of around 1.8% in IT services and it's largely in line with expectations. I think the big, big surprise, perhaps a disappointing one, was with respect to your outlook for the fourth quarter. So the company has guided for a sequential growth of 0 to 2%, uh, whereas the expectations were 1 to 3%. So perhaps a notch below expectations with respect to guidance for the third quarter. Uh, we've also seen considerable expansion in operating margins for Wipro, where your IT services operating margins stood at around 19.8%. As against, uh, on an adjusted basis, well, perhaps, 18.1%. So of course, if you remove the carve out, that stands uh, at 15% on the base quarter. But uh, you know, moving on to geographies, again, with respect to growth, uh, Americas have seen an uptick of around 3.7% sequentially. And the banking and financial services vertical, particularly, has also seen a growth of around 4.7% on a constant currency terms. And these are the two positives. Uh, perhaps a negative would be with, with respect to the fourth quarter guidance. But on the whole, a steady quarter for Wipro. Got that. So some bigger numbers today. Kotak Mahindra Bank. Well, uh, brokerage are expecting the net interest income to be higher by close to 10% to 2,600 crore rupees, while the company's net profit is expected to be 13% higher to close to 1,200 crore rupees. Now, on the NPA front, the GNP is expected to be stable at close to 2.1%, while the net in, uh, net NPA is expected to be close to 0.8%. Now, brokerage is expecting the standalone bank to report a 23% growth when it comes to loan, while a 21% deposit growth is expected compared to last year, and the net interest margins are likely to remain stable at close to 4.3 percent. Now the key driver for the net interest income and the net interest margin for Kotak Mahindra Bank is expected to be the CASA retention. Now the other income is also expected to be higher driven mostly by higher fees income that we had seen in the third quarter of financial year 2019. While on the asset quality front it is expected to remain stable led by improvement in the coverage ratio for the bank. Now the key things to watch out for from Kotak Mahindra Bank earnings would be the guidance on the balance sheet growth and the trend in customer acquisition post the Aadhaar verdict that the 
management gives along with that management commentary on a uh, stake reduction uh, promoter stake reduction will be one of the important things that the uh, investors will be watching out for from the Kotak Mahindra bank earnings today all right, Samla, thanks a lot for that. Uh, some mid-cap numbers also uh, will be in focus. That's right, Devina. I'll start with Z-Learn, and they came out with a good set of numbers. Uh, revenues are, uh, have almost doubled to uh, 213 crore rupees versus 52 crores in the same quarter last year. Uh, net profit has gone up by 80.5% to 13.9 crores, aided by another income element of 8.4 crores in the current quarter. Uh, mixed quarter for South Indian Bank, uh, the calculated net interest income, that came in at 295 crore rupees, which is a 12% increase on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, however, net profit has fallen by 27% to 84 crore rupees, uh, and the and the asset quality or the net gross NPA uh, that has contracted by about close to 30 basis points. Omax Auto they came out with a mixed set of numbers. Uh, revenues are down 26.5% to 227 crore rupees. The company reported a net profit in the third quarter coming in at about 1.58 crore rupees, but that too uh, is aided by a lower depreciation and a higher other income element. Uh, margins they have come in at about 5% versus 3.1% in the same quarter so strong operational performance all right guys thanks very much for that so that's uh, a really long list of stocks that you need to keep an eye out on and uh, i'm going to pick up one uh, that reports numbers today and that's going to be kotak mahindra bank avinash uh, your take on what the bank could do this time around uh, our sense is, you know, uh, the bank should report uh, a steady set of numbers, especially if you look at the loan book and the deposit growth numbers, uh, they should be in the region of 18 to 20 odd percent. Uh, I think the market should be looking at the kind of commentary, especially as far as the CASA and the management dilution is concerned. But overall, I think uh, it's going to be a pretty uh, decent set of numbers. And I think if the market gets a number beyond 1200 crores, uh, that would be a pleasant uh, positive surprise. At least uh, the near term, you know, the stock looks well positioned for a medium term upside okay and do watch out for this one and uh, as we said I mean we'll also talk about Raymond later on because there are two stocks in the crosshairs for different reasons supposedly in the crosshairs because the media reports one of them is DCB Bank the other one is Raymond both of those could be reacting today we'll talk about them fundamentally too I think it's time to get in our technical experts on board so Richard Jain technical analyst at Angel Broking as well as Brijesh Bhatia head of research at Deal Money Securities gentlemen both of you good morning thanks so much for joining in uh, Brijesh, if I can start off with you, what's your approach to the index today? Would you trade either the Nifty or the Nifty Bank this morning? Yeah, good morning. Uh, I would love to go long on uh, Nifty today. Uh, so if you look at the uh, momentum in last uh, couple of days, uh, Nifty is being strongly holding 10,850. Uh, convincingly, and we have seen a couple of days uh, moving about 10,900 again. So a close about 10,900 10, is giving good confirmation. And if you look at the derivative structure, uh, we are witnessing uh, some unwinding coming in 10,900 call, 11,000 uh, call. Even if you look at the 11,100 call, uh, we are witnessing unwinding happening uh, around uh, those uh, strikes. So I think uh, sentiment is clearly indicating that we are heading uh, towards uh, the 11,000 mark now. And I would go long uh, at opening, uh, keeping a mind target of around 11,034, 11,040 uh, on the upside. And uh, keeping a stop loss of uh, uh, below the 10,834, which was a couple of days low, uh, was around 10,840. So slightly below uh, those uh, levels, uh, 10,834, uh, one can uh, go long aggressively uh, for the target of 11,040. Mm -hmm. Rochit, uh, good morning to you. And what about you? Are you trading either the Nifty or the Nifty Bank? Yeah, hi, very good morning, Neeraj. Neeraj, well, uh, despite of the positive global uh, markets in the recent past, we have seen that our markets have seen a consolidation phase since last one, one and a half months now. And during uh, last week, we did saw a breakout above uh, the resistance of 10,850 mark, but the follow-up move was clearly missing. We have not seen any follow-up up move even after the breakout which was seen in, in uh, Tuesday's session. So I think we are still in a consolidation phase and index is likely to trade in a very narrow range uh, you know, until we get a breakout about 10,940, 10,950 kind of levels. So we are uh, you know, uh, advising our clients to here to focus more on st stock specific front because you know, as far as index is concerned, in the last 3-4 weeks we have not found any, much, uh, any great opportunity to go for a swing trade. So if we are looking for a swing trade, then I think stock specific approach is, is a much better idea. Yes, if in case any existing long positions are there, then that should be held on because there are no negative signs on the index. So once we get a breakout above 9, 10,940, 950, we could see momentum extending towards 11,050 or 11,100. So we are advising to hold on existing long trades if any, and if fresh longs are to be created on the index, then let it cross about 10,950. Then one can initiate fresh longs for target around 11,050. 11, okay. 
Uh, stay on, gentlemen. Before we get into stock-specific recommendations, it's almost 8.50, so time for our special segment, Bloomberg Edge, where Yash Upadhyay tells you about a pattern that the Bloomberg terminal has thrown up on a stock. Yash, what's the stock on your radar today? Morning, Neeraj. So we are tracking HCL Tech on the charts today uh, and a buy signal coming uh, on the back of the proprietary uh, Bloomberg indicator, which is the trender indicator. Let's first try and understand what it is. Uh, it basically uh, uses the average true range for its calculation. It helps generate a buy or a sell signal and also helps uh, when it comes to managing your stop loss. How do you interpret it? You go long uh, when the trender line flips its color from green uh, to red and you go short when the trender indicator goes from red uh, from green to red. Uh, in the case of of ACL Technologies, uh, well, uh, the stock had been in a downtrend. The trend line was red uh, from the levels of about 1,050 uh, to over uh, over here, which is a mark of 950. But what's happened yesterday or on in Friday's day of trade is that on the back of heavy volumes, and this is for the last two trading sessions that the stock has been moving up and gaining uh, more than one one and a half percent, and it has managed to close above uh, the trend line, which is at the mark of 957. Now the stock has closed at 966, which means. Uh, that the trend line would flip its color from red to green. Interesting. And how well has this worked for HCL Technologies individually in the past year? So Neeraj, four out of the last six times over the last one year that the indicator has turned positive, uh, well, one could watch out for returns of close to 4% over the next uh, one month. Wow. Uh all right, Yash, thanks very much for that. But for a deeper insight on Indian equities, visit BloombergQueen.com, where we identify technical triggers that have emerged in a specific stock or a sector every day. On today's Bloomberg Edge, we feature Biocon and what its open interest charts indicate. That's a BQ Blue exclusive. All right, uh, technical experts are still here with us, Ruchit as well as uh, Brijesh. I'm going to start off with some talk, top stock calls. Ruchit, let's start off with you. So since we are focusing more on stock specific momentum, you know, I have two recommendations on the buy side and both are based on the theory of breakout. First is a call in Britannia. Britannia you know, since last one, one and a half months has seen a consolidation phase but this entire consolidation phase just seemed to be a time wise correction within an uptrend. The stock price are now on the verge of the breakout above its resistance of 3220 which has been seen the higher end of this consolidation phase. Now looking at the price and the volume action. We believe that we would see a breakout in the stock in this week itself. So we are advising our traders to go long on Britannia with stock below 3060. From a short term perspective, expecting target around 3460. And Godfrey Phillips is my uh, second stock pick. Now this mid cap name has already given a breakout uh, after a consolidation phase during last week. And if I see the last Tuesday session, then the breakout was accompanied by very high volumes. So usually we see whenever see a price up move above the resistance supported by increasing volumes. So that's a positive good sign for short to medium term. So for traders, you no know, one can you know, go long on Godfrey Phillips at current levels with stop below 884, expecting short term target of 1068. Rajesh, what are your top calls? Uh, I have a one uh, long and one short, uh, so I will uh, go long on DCB Bank. Uh, so if you look at the uh, result day on 16th, so uh, we have seen uh, some uh, selling pressure coming. But if you look at the uh, follow-up uh, day on the 17th, uh, stock has seen a strong up move with uh, larger volumes. So I think at around uh, 185, uh, one can go long uh, for the target of around 198, keeping a stop loss of around 179. Uh, this could be around uh, three to four days of trading session call. And uh, another is uh, sell on Oro Pharma. Uh, so if you look at the uh, technical uh, parameters, the stock has seen some selling pressure in Friday with uh, good volumes. So uh, volumes were the uh, one of the highest uh, in last five trading sessions, and uh, it is making again a lower high, and RSI has turned negative. So I think I will go short on Oro Pharma at around 770 uh, levels uh, for the target of 736 to 724, and uh, one can keep a stop loss of 791. All these are spot levels, so you can trade accordingly in future. Uh, remember, Bridgesh is tracking the chart moves and the pricing activity thereof, but uh, you need to keep an eye out on what's happening with the news flow as well. So while or he DCB spoke Bank about DCB is. Bank, yeah, you probably be, would see that stock open a bit lower in today's session. So mm. maybe, you know, <coughs> keep a balanced approach with what's been happening in, on the charts as well as the news flow mm. on the stock. Uh, 185 though on DCB Bank. Sun Pharma, the big loser. On Friday session, 8% under, in fact, was down about 11.5% in intraday trade, recovered a little 3.5% by the end of the trading session. But Avinash, uh, you know, 
is it uh, going to be a tough ride for shareholders here on yeah i think uh, looking at the kind of uh, events which have unfolded uh, they been i would not be surprised that until and unless uh, you know the market gets a clarity on uh, how these uh, you know accounting entries were uh, it done with the companies you know closely held uh, you know companies uh, i would not be surprised that the markets would uh, obviously look at these uh, corporate governance issues rather than the earnings uh, you know which have uh, long uh, been uh, quite subdued so i would believe that you know it's better to wait for maybe uh, some more time before the stock stabilizes but definitely this is not good news for the uh, retail as well as the institutional shareholders because uh, this kind of uh, outflow of money and corporate governance you know from a company like sun pharma was definitely not expected hmm. you know uh, we have a story on the website as well about what 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 sun pharma's woes mean for the stock and uh, devina it's essentially that's the whole sort of institutional shareholders that we spoke to on friday and on saturday as well and i think their opinion seems to be at, i mean the two or three names that we spoke to uh, a couple of them actually uh, had the stock of sun pharma and they've sold it over the last couple of days and their opinion was that uh, there are multiple issues which lead to some concerns about whether or not uh, uh, irrespective of what this stock does in the near term mm -hmm. but they believe that the upsides or a recovery in sun pharma could be a lot delayed and therefore they did not want to risk that capital on that front uh, stay away for the stock from the time being at least that was their call and it was evident in the way they reacted right the, the, and the stock went down on 82 million shares yeah. simply because institutional shareholders came out and sold the stock mm -hmm. so it's an important it's an interesting story which gives you an analysis of what institutional shareholders are thinking of sun pharma's vote yeah that was pretty clear when you saw the stock and the way it reacted True. On, on friday's session so um and considering they were the only ones who had access to that report uh three odd minutes left to go for market pre-open um brijesh i'm going to come to you on hcl tech now while we were talking about it in a, uh, a bqh segment uh the nifty it index last week did about four four and a half percent obviously uh, the key gainers being emphasis tcs the numbers came out and that probably give, gave it that leg up but uh, hcl tech has been missing in action so far in terms of giving a big contribution to the it index and the leg up there do you see that changing anytime yeah, if you look at the uh, already we have seen in position tcs momentum gaining and uh, if you look at the hcl tech it was majorly consolidating in the range of around uh, 940 and around uh, 920 on the downside and we have seen in friday session uh, that range been breaking out and most importantly it has given a, a, a positive crossover in macd as well so i think uh, it is heading for around uh, 1020 1030 on the upside this week uh, probably and one can keep a stop loss of uh, say uh, it was uh, low of around 900 45 on a friday so slightly 940 uh, one can look uh, stop loss of 940 and target could be 1030 on the upside watch out for this and two stocks that could be very interesting in the session today one of them would be z learn simply because while the revenues went up the margins came off from 35 odd percent to maybe 26 odd percent so this could be an interesting one usually very active on the volumes front as well do watch out for this one and the other one is raymond um, which again a newspaper report uh, uh, speaks about some irregularities which have been pointed out by the regulators. Avinash, we can talk for one after the mark pre-open session, but choose one, uh, the one that you think will react more, Zeeland or Raymond. Uh, I think Raymond uh, could react more because you know that is a more favorite uh, tradable stock and I would believe that you know this kind of uh, SEBI news if it is right uh, Neeraj one could see a uh, definitely a weaker opening today uh, unless the management gives out some sort of commentary as what is the current status I would not be surprised that the markets would again be concerned whether any big corporate governance issues are now going to come out. Yeah, I think people just want to stay away from any <laughs> anything related to corporate governance. Even if Sun Pharma can go through that, uh, even a whiff of this could well lead to a pullback uh, in Raymond stock as well in the session today. So do watch out for this one. Then you know, after a while, Raymond was stabilizing. Mm -hmm. Suffice to say, if this turns out to be true, uh, multiple securities market violations, um, shareholders won't be happy. Well, not at all. In fact, we've seen a whiff of that already in the monthly uh, decline. 6% low, but not as much. But you would probably see a bigger impact uh, considering the backlash that some of these stocks have witnessed on corporate governance issues. 34 seconds left to go for market pre-open. The setup looks like you will see a slight positive bias. No big bang move on the index expected. The SGX Nifty is still trading 
uh, in the green but a marginal tenth of a percent higher. The rest of Asia too uh, is positive so you've got a half a percent gain on the Nikkei 225. Hang Seng trades higher by another half an odd percent but uh, important to watch out for some of these bigger names and what happens to them at uh, open LNT Sun Pharma after the the clobbering that it witnessed on Friday session and uh, the result boy HDFC Bank what happens to that one that's pretty open on your screens nifty flat sensex with a slight positive bias for about half an odd percent and those numbers are trickling in LNT already uh, whiplashed you've got 10 percent cut on the stock but again that's just the first stick that you're seeing on the stock uh, this will stabilize and it will come back to mean so you've got to watch out for that one. Uh, UPL is down 1.9%, Access Bank is down the three quarters, Sun Pharma uh, half a percent, uh, a welcome move after that drop of 10% here on Friday session. Dr. Reddy's is down a quarter, you've got HDFC Limited which is down a quarter as well. But more positives than negatives, Gale is up 1.8%, NTPC 1.8%, Bharti Infratel up one percent 4%, Grassim, m and Tata Motors, Vipro post numbers ha a, a percent higher, Vedanta a half a percent higher, HUL another half an odd percent added up, HFC Bank your top gainer on the nifty now that's 2.7 percent higher on the back of its results so good going for that one and let's see whether LNT has budged from that position, no still 10 percent lower but we'll still give it a few more minutes to settle in. Rupee at 71.39, slight amount of weakness creeping back in. Mm, well, la. Sun Pharma, just want to pull that up. I'm sure they've been a market once, but I just want to mark it again. And let's see what's happening to the big boy after two days of consecutive falls. Uh, well, doesn't look like it'll have a sigh of relief. Sun Pharma Advanced Research could be the other one, which could correct as well in the session. So let's wait and watch. Uh, but Larson and Tubro uh, under the biggest cloud right now. Uh, so that's the large cap action. The mid caps, Raymond and DCB. Firstly, those two on newspaper reports. Uh, and let's see, well, no reaction on Raymond. Interesting. Let's see DCB Bank. The management was pretty emphatic uh, in their comments about this not happening. But, well, a stock down about 10% in the first sticks on the pre open session. Linda India Indas is the other one, which of course would also be in the cloud, down about 20%. We'll talk to Avinash Godakshaker about that too, so keep that at the back of your mind. HT Media, if it starts off 5% lower, could be interesting because I remember when the advertisement rates were high, a stock went up 20% and nudged the 50 rupee mark. Since then, it's come off quite rapidly the last few days. So, well, you know, it was a small gain and then a lot of losses that are coming in for this one. Uh, Z Learn is the other one that I want to mark. We'll talk about that num those numbers with Avinash as well. For now, if these rates are true, maybe the market looks at the revenue number growth and believes that all is okay. But let's wait and watch. The margin compression was very steep. Um, maybe just maybe that could have a bit of a issue with uh, the numbers. Let's see what happens there. But certainly doesn't seem to be happening. For now. Oh, and and I'm sorry, I, I, I want to st I stand corrected. I thought DCB Bank was the top loser. Seems like Sun Pharma Advanced Research would be uh, taking that if indeed these rates turn out to be true because it looks like it'll start off on the pre open session. The first one minute suggests that it'll start off about 20% lower. These rates are subject to change. Please keep that at the back of your mind. But yeah, LNT and a few others certainly under a lot of stress. We'll try and get a technical view going as well, but it's important to get the fundamental view going first. I mean, ask three stocks one by one. Uh, Z Learn, yes, Larson and Tubro, and Linda India. Let's uh, talk about Z Learn first. No, I think Z Learn, uh, Neeraj, as you pointed out, you know the revenues have doubled, but uh, that has come at the cost of uh, margins. And uh, I believe the profit after tax also has been aided by a very large other income. So I think one would like to know the sustainability of this other income. Uh, they have been operating in the you know education uh, space for a fairly long time and in fact, in fact uh, uh, markets were looking at a better margin picture at least considering the kind of nature of business they operate. So I would believe that once the you know uh, concurrence call is complete and one gets a hint as to whether these margins have uh, been uh, you know disrupted due to a one time effect or whether they could be you know elevated in the coming quarters that would be a key factor to watch but I think around 34, 35 this stock has remained uh, pretty static over the last say three to four months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about uh, Larson and Dubro. 
Uh, Larson and Tubro Neeraj, I would believe that uh, this uh, move was anticipated. I think uh, really you anticipated the. I think I think this kind of uh, this kind of fall, you know, probably maybe uh, till the time the Q3 numbers are not out because uh, this buyback news is definitely something which is a uh, which has left a bad taste in the minds of investors. I would believe that you know unless and until now the management actually comes with a plan B as to compensate the shareholders. I think in the near term, you know, the stock could remain a little bit weak. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, we're talking about uh, two other stocks, obviously Spark, uh, Sun Pharma Advanced Research, that being uh, the top loser, and India India. Friday session, 20% lower circuit. Today, most likely you'll see. Uh, I think uh, I would be surprised, you know, the uh, buyback price which has been announced, uh, Devina, I think needs to be aggressively up because uh, none of the institutional or the large holders have actually, uh, you know, been interested in the current buyback offer. So I think uh, the, the, the news flow was that uh, the collaborator wanted to delist the co mm. completely the company. Uh, probably if the buyback price is not revised, one could definitely see that in the near term, you know, this stock could possibly uh, languish and possibly, uh, you know, trade with a negative. Bias. Okay, that's on Linde India. Uh, some technical hurdles there with regards to <clears throat> the delisting uh, of the stock. It was announced in November last year. Since then, the stock did manage to show some uh, some moves on the upside, but looks like uh, the last few days of trade have completely washed all of that out. And Friday session itself was under by about 20 odd percent. Anything that you particularly like, Avinash? In fact, uh, Devina, we like uh, paper stocks because we believe the paper cycle still continues to be quite positive. And within this space, uh, you know, we like a company called Orient Paper and Industries. In fact, it's a CK Birla Group company. Uh, it's been demerged uh, about uh, six to eight months back, and now it's a pure paper company uh, which has got a large capacity in the tissue paper segment. In fact, it's a market leader here. Our uh, uh, emphasis is that you know, uh, not only the margin growth plus the top line, you know, from this segment is going to be much stronger than the overall writing and printing paper. So I think in terms of valuations and in terms of the earnings growth, uh, you could see a lot of improvement coming in in FY20 uh, as well as you know going forward. So probably uh, this could be a good uh, you know kind of a reasonably good bet over the next say 12 to 15 odd months. We leave it at that, Avinash. Thank you so very much for joining and appreciate your time. Avinash Gurak Shekhar there with his views this morning. Bringing in Nishal Maheshwari, CEO at Centrum Broking. He's joining us on the show as well. Nishal, good morning to you. What's it looking like now? You know, we've settled into the month of January. It looks like we're making an approach, but more consolidation would be what we're looking at at this particular hour. What's the trend like in terms of the news flow? What are you going to be tracking more closely on the global front as well as on the domestic front? Uh, morning, Devina. So I would actually look at it in two buckets actually what's the domestic scene and how is the international uh, scene working out so if i look at it i think international seems to be now uh, more favorable given that the oil prices are low we are seeing uh, several uh, countries uh, actually talking about a rate reversal or already on the process of it or uh, stalling the rate hikes so that is positive across the world uh, the scare about uh, growth, world growth, I think that seems to be receding. And uh, we seems to be uh, uh, a way out of the US-China uh, trade war. So I think um, on, the, on the global front, seems, uh, things seems to be pretty uh, well poised. Uh, coming back to domestic side, I think uh, we have this big event uh, around the corner, basically three, four months later, we have the big general election. And I think market is waiting for that uh, event to just get over. It's not historically these events have never impacted the market much beyond a week or two. But uh, obviously the uncertainty remains to be there and uh, market doesn't like uncertainty. So I think uh, people are just hanging around, not committing too much capital at the moment. Mm -hmm. So that's a broad thought, thought process out here. I think it's going to be remain range bound. Uh, maybe upside 11,200, something like that, downside 10,500, unless there is some major event which happens. Interesting. I would want to talk to Nishchal about the marathon as well. I'm sure he ran yesterday, but we'll do that at the end of the conversation. Nishchal, just uh, one uh, good morning, Neeraj here. Um, the, the resilience that we've, uh, the Nifty has shown despite cracks in a in multiple large caps is pretty interesting. We've had casualties like Sun Pharma, Bharti Airtel, and a few others. 
we are holding on despite lower commitment of capital. Do you reckon the near term there is more chance of uh, this uh, resilience breaking down or will we hold fort? So, uh, Neeraj, uh, morning, I think uh, market has been unrelenting in punishing stocks basically where the, wherever there is a hint of even a quality issue. So, you look at it basically whether it is a large cap or a mid cap basically, I think uh, everywhere basically it has been beaten down whether it is Yes Bank, Sun Pharma. So, everywhere a hint of uh, quality issues and basically the market is unrelenting there. So, I think these are casualties because of that rather than anything else actually. I do not see a broader uh, the thought process that the large caps are getting uh, are not because uh, large cap seems to be doing otherwise pretty well and they are actually holding the market up. Because if you look at the difference between the large and the mid caps, I think mid cap the index should be somewhere between 9, 9 and a half thousand and uh, on the, because of the large caps only basically you are seeing a market at around 11,000 uh, nifty. So, uh, large cap seems to be doing okay uh, at the current moment. All right. We are just uh, minutes away from market opening, just stay on with us gentlemen. Uh, we need to tell you what all you need to watch out for to stay ahead in trade today. First up, Q3 earnings, HDFC Bank continues to post over 20% top line and bottom line growth. On the asset quality front, higher agri slippages pushed up NPA marginally, but in all, a largely inline set of numbers from the bank. Wipro posted a 34% jump in profits for the third quarter. That's far better than what TCS and Infosys could achieve. Margin expanded to 19.8% ahead of estimates. However, growth guidance of 0 to 2% for Q4 below street estimates. The stock likely to start off a couple of percentage points lower. In earnings today, watch out for Kotak Mahindra Bank. The street expects a stable December quarter asset quality. Two may remain stable, although gross NPA in the MSME segment is a key factor to watch out for. SEBI expresses reservations over LNT's buyback plan. The regulator is concerned that after the proposed 9,000 crore buyback, LNT's debt would be twice the paid-up capital in free reserves. SEBI says this will breach regulations while LNT contests that it will not on a standalone basis. The stock, 3% lower in the pre-open session. SEBI has issued a show cause notice to Raymond over securities market violations. The regulator says Raymond did not take necessary approvals for related party transactions, a case of non-disclosure and non-compliance under shareholder norms. Of course, that's a newspaper report. And lastly, the Serious Fraud Investigation Office has sought cancellation of DCB Bank's banking license, according to a Hindu Business Line report. The investigator says the bank played a role in the National Spot Exchange scam. The stock, well, about 5% lower in the pre-open session. That turns out to be amongst the top losers uh, in the session. Okay, um, just need to, uh, Nishal, stay on. So much more to talk about, but just need to talk about a couple of uh, charts because we're very close to market open. Ruchit, I'll come to you. Larson and Tubro at 1279. Would you hazard a trade or would you leave it alone? So, Neeraj, uh, no, rather than this gap down opening, I think what follow-up moves comes after this 3% gap down, that would be more important. <clears throat> because just before this gap, if you analyze last couple of weeks, the stock price has already corrected from its high of 1450 to sub-1300 now. So, I don't think that one should uh, look for any kind of shorting opportunities over here. I think uh, for taking a trade, I would wait for a follow-up move, what happens in first half an hour. And in case we see that uh, post a gap down opening, the stock manages to recover again above 1300, 1310, then I think uh, no, that would uh, you know, create some sort of short covering move uh, where, where we can again see a pullback move. So I would wait for first half an hour. And if we see a cross after gap down opening, if we see a follow-up buying wherein the stock crosses above 1310, then I would uh, take it as a buying opportunity. Right, Brijesh, uh, I think you mentioned DCB Bank is one of your uh, trading ideas. You're most likely going to see the stock uh, open lower. You want to tweak that around in any way? I think if it's holding 171, 172 and uh, showing again a sign of uh, good upside momentum, then I think uh, worst might be over uh, uh, for uh, DCB. And I think 190, 195 would be headed uh, this week. So I would slightly wait for 171, 170 if it's holding. Uh, one should uh, look for a good uh, upside momentum. Okay. Uh, still holding on to that call, but making some few uh, price changes out there. One minute left to go for market opening. I'm going to quickly run through some top ideas from both our technical experts, Rajesh and Richard. Richard, let's start off with you. What's going to be your top call for the day? 
I would continue with uh, one of my pick that was good for Philips. You know, the prices have closed near the supports, and we are seeing an, a positive opening of about eight tenths of a percent. So this is an indication that the support day would be held on, and we could see a good follow -up buying over here. So from a near term perspective, go long on good for Philips today, even at opening levels, which stop below eight eighty four, targeting one thousand sixty eight. Rajesh. Yeah, apart from uh, two calls we discussed, one can look for a, a momentum based trade uh, long on VEDL, uh, Vedanta, uh, and uh, for the target of around 207 and keeping a stop loss of around 196.5. Okay. Um, interesting. 20 seconds left. Uh, you know, I'll, okay, let's, let's not, uh, we, we'll probably take in a call on Sun Pharma or the others post market open. But it, uh, we're slated for a start which is marginally in the green for the Nifty and the Nifty Bank. Uh, let's see if we hold on to those levels and we gain further or not. The world wasn't an unhappy place. Asia was quiet, we'll probably be quiet as well. This is how we're starting off. Well, in unexpected lines, very, very flat. The Nifty Bank to just about 40 odd points. So it's a very flat start for the benchmark indices. The mid caps and the small caps should come up on your screen. And those two should be starting off very, very flat. So no big changes in the large cap or the mid cap or even on the index basis. So let's get in the heat map and let's see what's happening to individual pockets. Uh, Sun Pharma is in the green. Uh, let's see if it lasts. NTPC, amongst the other gainers, enforces marginally higher. But as you can see, the gainers list is very, very muted. Reliance industry is still about half a percent higher. Bharti Etel recovers a little bit from Friday's drubbing. And Aisha Motors and a few others are marginally in the green. HDFC Bank, no big reaction to its numbers. What about the losers? Wipro reacts, LNT reacts. And uh, the oil marketing company is slightly soft, but aside of that, again, no big reactions either. Just about a 2% reaction on Larson and Wipro because of the guidance being lower, down about 2%. But it's even Stevens, uh, no big changes. The only news from the large cap arena seems to be that Sun Pharma is in the green. Actually, let's talk about the stocks in focus, large caps, mid caps, all of them before I hand it over to Devina for the entire clutch of what's happening across the spectrum of stocks on the large cap and the mid cap arena. The top losers from Friday, all three are starting off marginally positively. Sun Pharma, Spark, as well as Bharti Airtel. So, well, no big changes here. Not a bad sign for somebody who's still held, holding on to those stocks. For now, they are marginally in the green. What about the newsmakers for the day today? Some result reactions and some otherwise. Firstly, both of these stocks, Raymond as well as DCB Bank, according to different media reports, are in the crosshairs for different reasons. DCB having the larger reaction, but again, it's, it's muted relative to the nature of the report. So let's wait and watch what happens here. Last but not the least, I just want to mark one set of numbers, and which is Z-Learn because the big drop in margins, but the market obviously giving cognizance to the rise in revenues, over 2x rise in revenues, and the stock for now, marginally in the green. Let's see if it manages to hold on. Maybe not, what are you spotting? Mid caps, at least the broader market picture right now seems to be more even keel in terms of the advanced decline. I'm going to start off with some losers first and then uh, run through the gainers. KRBL is one which is down 1.8%. Soba developers, 2% lower. Jet Airways continues to grind lower. So 276 is there, what we've got on the stock after the last week, which was pretty okay for the counter actually, 14% higher in the last seven days. Raymond continues 1% lower, you already highlighted that. JK Tires down 1%. Uh, you've got the likes of Zinsar Tech down 1% 1, 1 or Jeevan Financial First Source, they are down closer to a percent a piece. Ashoka Buildcon also loses out in trade today. Some stocks which are gaining and Praj continues its move on the upside, so 1.78% on Praj Industries. Uh, you've got uh, Shri Infra which is higher up in trade today. A Moil moves up 1%, and IOB that's up three quarters of a percent. Uh, JM Financials are up three quarters of a percent. Deepak Fertilizers, uh, these are the kind of gains that we are seeing. PTC India is also up about half a percent. But no big bang moves uh, uh, within uh, the mid cap space. The, the index, the mid cap and small cap index, absolutely flat. A very stock specific moves coming in there. Uh, quick uh, comments, um, you know, before we let our technical experts uh, uh, go. Brijesh, just one final word from you before we let you go this morning. I think uh, Nifty is quite holding uh, 10,900 even uh, the, despite that LNT and uh, all this fear news was there. Uh, one can look for a long on futures or even long on uh, call options buying 10,950 or maybe 11,000 call. And uh, one can look for target of around 11,000, above 11,000 on spot with a stop loss of around 10,834. Hmm. Ruchit, a quick call on Yes Bank before we let you go. 
So I think this uh, recent up move just seemed to be a pullback move in Yes Bank, and uh, doesn't seem that the stock has you know quite uh, resumed its uh, high degree, I mean its, uh, its previous uptrend. So I think uh, you know, on the high side, 210 to 215 would continue to act as a resistance. So use this pullback move as an opportunity to exit from Yes Bank and rather you know uh, shift to some other names such as HDFC Bank uh, from this space. Okay, move from Yes to HDFC. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us, Ruchit as well as Brijesh. Appreciate both of you speaking to us this morning. Nishal Maheshwari is still here with us. Uh, Nishal, you know, as we're in the midst of uh, Q3, we've seen that this time around, at least the larger IT names, uh, not disappointed much. Though Bipro, with their guidance cut, seems to be slightly in, in, in a bit of a fix. Leaving that aside, what is expected from quarter three in a big way? And any particular sector that you think is going to take center stage for this earnings? So I think um, uh, this quarter numbers, I think, from the corporate bank should be good. I think that is one of the sectors which uh, clearly stands out in the current quarter. So not only the PSU banks, but uh, uh, not only the private sector, but even the PSU banks should uh, post a healthy set of numbers. So I think uh, that is one sector, basically, which uh, we have been tracking closely and are positive about. The other one is the consumption. Uh, again, Lever showed a good volume growth of around 10%. I think uh, that's a very decent number for such a large company. So I think consumption still continues to uh, uh, drive the market. I think uh, uh, volume-wise, cement should do, be in a decent position, but uh, there has been disappointment as far as uh, the prices are concerned. But I think that seems to be also in a good space. So I think there are some of the uh, uh, sectors, basically, where you can find good value and uh, uh, not in FMCG, yes, but the other two sectors basically seems to be in a good good spot. Vishal, um, what did you make of this whole news flow surrounding uh, Sun Pharma? We, you know, we were speaking to institutional shareholders which ha who held the stock. Some of them held the stock and no longer holding the stock. Some of them still holding the stock in the hope that this will all die down. What is your advice been to your clients who would be asking you about what to do with the big boy? See, in this kind of uh, things, basically, it has always been that uh, 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 given that there is so much uncertainty around this and there is no clarity, basically, with the management is also given, uh, given that uh, they are also not aware uh, about the letter, at least that's what they put out, uh, I think, on Friday, saying that we are not aware of what's there, basically, in the letter. In this kind of an un uncertainty, basically, if you are... I don't know how many of people are sitting on profits or something basically, but if you are close to your cost also, I think it is best to exit because these things don't die down uh, very easily because uh, it will take a long time and investigations and all those kind of things keep on happening around this. And this will be a big uh, overhang on the stock. So best to avoid if you are not a buyer, if you do not have it. Uh, if you are close to your cost price, I think best to exit. Even on a small losses, basically, you should exit the stocks. Well, sound advice as well, and I know it's a difficult call, but I think Nishal spells it out really, really well for us. By the way, stocks which are not doing well today include a South Indian bank as well. I think the results reaction being seen down about 8%. DCB Bank, amongst others, which is also correcting a little bit in trade. And the Sun Pharma Group stock, Spark, for example, is up about 4%. But let's wait and watch um, how well it does. I heard you mention, Nishal, that cement seems to be a pocket which is of interest uh, to your house. Uh, what's the rationale here? I mean, and are you preferring the large caps over the mid caps? Is it, is it the valuation play or is it the belief that pricing could come back at some point of time? So I think the second one is what we are betting on, basically saying that the pricing should come, in, uh, come on, basically, uh, especially in the coming quarter. This current quarter basically has always been the best and uh, if they are able to uh, see this kind of volume growth which we saw in last quarter, I think prices should be headed upwards uh, and that's what we are betting upon saying that the maybe the, this and the next quarter should be good for the cement sector. Uh, with this kind of strong volume growth, I think uh, they are poised to do well in the current and the second thing has been the cost uh, has come down for most of them, uh, especially people who are using pet coal, coal prices, uh, transportation cost, I think uh, so that, that I think uh, that's another uh, positive for the cement sector. So it could be a double whammy uh, from the, on the positive side, basically, for the cement guys. 
would you look at commodities in greater detail now not just uh, crude oil beneficiaries but uh, even look at metals and what global metal prices have been up to and how there has been some pressures with regards to raw materials for some of the steel manufacturers so uh, steel i think basically you have to be now very very stock specific because i think the cycle is past its peak and uh, it's on the way down so uh, you have to be very very stock specific in these i think i uh, the better thing would be to play consumables and the downstream guys where the margins are sustainable for a much longer period of time because they are consumables either or they are uh, uh, products on its own so companies like tata metallics which uh, manufacture the uh, ductile pipes or somebody like uh, 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 tata sponge which is going to get benefited because they have bought or, or usha martin is getting merged with them uh, at a 30 percent lower cost or somebody like uh, avesuvius and the the whole uh, uh, two or three of those uh, consumable items guys so i think still you have to be very selective rather than going out and playing the pure uh, commodity play <coughs> do you see uh, a change in approach for investing in mid caps versus large caps and the change considerably from last year where it was all about large caps mid caps were I I ignored to a certain extent do you see that reversing this time around? probably not even reversing but just the mid caps and small caps playing catch up I think so, Devina. Basically, because historically, if you really look at it, uh, interest rates are uh, uh, whenever a falling interest rate regime happens, basically, and I, I very surely expect that to happen uh, in the coming year. Uh, that kind of a situation we always found that the mid caps do very well because they are the uh, marginal borrowers. Uh, they are the guys who get the hit uh, the most, basically, as far as the interest cost is concerned. So, and uh, obviously, uh, as the uh, prices become cheaper, the, the consumption also goes up. So, they are the guys basically who benefit on both these sides. So, uh, one is that, and the second thing is obviously valuations are pretty good at this stage. So, I think uh, some of these should do well. Uh, we have to be very careful basically, once again, as I was highlighting, that any uh, issue as far as the quality is concerned, market is not touching it. Yeah. And that's something that should be top of your mind. Nishil, uh, before, I mean, I would want to ask you about how the run was. I presume you would have run. But just before that, um, autos as a space. Uh, now, you know, the, the street is divided right down the middle about whether or not the recovery will come back and whether or not these are good block pockets to invest in. What's the house you there? Are you guys investing in autos? What are the names that you're recommending? And do auto ancillaries, therefore, as a natural extension, form a part of this as well? Because, frankly, on a valuation front, a lot of these large auto ancillary companies have come off and come off quite rapidly in the last six months. So, uh, needed just to update you, basically, I didn't run yesterday. This is, I think, I missed it in the last seven years, first time. But okay. uh, yes, unfortunately, I couldn't make it because I was not prepared. So <laughs> just to update you on that. Uh, but having said that, I've already ran a couple of them basically uh, uh, in, uh, this year. So it's fine basically, and we'll continue with that. Uh, as far as autos is concerned, uh, I think uh, autos, uh, uh, we are avoiding autos at the moment. Uh, we do not see a very strong recovery happening as far as the CV cycle is concerned and PVs are concerned um, uh, because there is a lack of demand on the ground. And uh, uh, what we are uh, saying that uh, given that uh, there is going to be uh, uh, some positive um, handouts or something like that, some positive uh, measures being taken by the government to take care of the uh, rural sector. Two wheelers might be in a good spot to be uh, in the next, uh, this quarter and the next. So I think two wheelers is one basically which you would want to play. As far as auto ancillaries are concerned, I think it is very, very company specific. You cannot be in a very, uh, there's nothing like an industry kind of a view you can have on the auto ancillaries. But yes, I think Mother Sansomi there seems to have corrected quite a bit and uh, should be uh, coming into value play. But we do not cover it at the moment, so I can't comment on that at the Fair call. Nishal, I appreciate you taking the time out and joining us today. Uh, really nice talking to you after a while. Look forward to have you more often on this forum. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. That's Nishal Maheshwari of Centrum with his thoughts on 
the markets and specific pockets of strength and weakness. Uh, avoiding autos, maybe auto ancillaries like Motherson and a few others could be interesting. Once they start having coverage, they'll probably comment more on it. But the interesting thing was cement. They are bullish on cement. Uh, and that's a pocket that a lot of people are shunning. Yeah, and his, uh, his outlook on mid-caps playing catch-up too. You know, that, that works well and sort of well-rounded uh, as he spoke about the interest rate regime and how that impacts uh, the move for uh, mid-caps. Well, on the other side, uh, we're going to take a very short break now. So on the other side, we're going to be discussing the telecom sector. And telecom operators are yet to recover from the competitive pressures triggered by Geo. We talk with Nitin Sony of Fitch Ratings regarding the same. And discuss business outlook with BM Gupta of TFCI after it's got the RBI approval for a change in management control. Anything and everything about your investments. We're just a touch away. Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. This is a show which gets you a complete trap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. Everyone's a price taker, not a price maker out there. There are better opportunities in the marketplace. The return ratios will improve, margins will improve. What are you seeing? Valuations are extremely expensive. It would take 100 years of profits to really pay off the entire debt. Not all good businesses are good investments. Good return on equity could be expected. And I think that will sustain. Their numbers etc were pretty sluggish. How much longer they can sustain, I'm not too sure. It has never been the scenario in any of the stocks. It's an avoid for him at this point of time. I wouldn't write it off in such a hurry. They're getting into more complex chemistry. Join me as I navigate the hottest stocks and help you pick the right stock at the right time. Welcome back, you're watching Indian Open. There's never been a dull moment in Indian Telecom, be it the arrival of a new player or two of the three largest operators deciding to join hands. What's constant through all of this is the tariff war, and it's not showing any signs of ebbing. The pace of growth, at least for the three of the top four players, have also started to taper. So how does one assess the value of these companies and the telecom sector as a whole? Let's ask Nathan Sony, director at Fitch Ratings, who tracks this extremely closely. 
Absolutely. Now, thanks very much for taking out the time. So, you know, let's start off with, uh, you know, what is happening within the industry. While we're talking about the pricing powers, you know, we're anticipating that it might actually start to come back in. But at this point, there are no signs of that. You would anticipate uh, the story being more company specific now within the telecom sector? Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. So we have been saying that uh, this is a sector which has uh, corrected the industry structure in a long, intensive, uh, competitive battle. We have come a long way. We had uh, 10 to 12 different telcos, and now we are we are in a position where there are three large telcos which has emerged out of the uh, shakeout in the industry. Uh, Geo is rapidly gaining market share. They already have about 280 million subscribers. And I think we, we do expect that by the mid of 2019 or the third quarter, uh, Geo would have a revenue market share would be very close to Bharti Airtel's of 30 to 30%. While we expect the Voda idea to uh, uh, get a reduced market share of below 30% by that time, and uh, that that we, in our opinion, should be the time frame where Geo would start uh, changing its approach and would start monetizing its large investment of over 40 billion dollars. Uh, remember, they have invested and 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 been operating in this industry for almost seven eight years now and they haven't made any uh, sufficient return on investment in this sector. So we do expect the tariff to rationalize in 2019, uh, starting in the, in the second, third quarters of, of, of this calendar year. And then, till pricing power gets restored now, what exactly is going to remain the focus? Is, this, is it going to be uh, a 4G uh, that's going to take center stage? Is it going to be, uh, you know, how companies look at asset monetization? Is it going to be, uh, you know, network capex and spectrum redeployment? What exactly, according to you, is going to take center stage? I think the all the telcos would be pretty much focused on providing a good internet experience to their consumers because that is going to be really a driving factor for gaining a larger subscriber base and retaining the the revenue market share in this industry. So we are, you know, we have rapidly moved to a time where it's it's a commoditized product and all telcos are focusing on providing a streamlined internet experience to their users. So they will have to continuously invest on CAPEX. So CAPEX uh, uh, investment will be uh, sizable for the incumbents and Geo as well. They have to penetrate further into the fixed broadband market where Geo is going to commercially launch its, its products. And that market is, uh, is going to uh, become in, intense in terms of competition going forward. While we do expect, you know, that that is a sticky market and underpenetrated with only two million customers with Bharti Airtel, and there's a long way to go. But I think as a market, uh, you know, the data uh, consumption has grown from one GB to about seven to nine GB on each of the telcos. So data growth is really the driving factor for the revenue in in 2019. And as the data tariff remains cheap at up about 100 to 120, 30 levels, the data growth, uh, we will see a phenomenal data growth in 2019 and 20. Would you say Bharti Airtel is uh, well positioned to capitalize on this? So we have a rating of triple B minus uh, with a stable outlook on Bharti Airtel. And Airtel, given its uh, diversified uh, revenue and EBITDA position, has been the only telco which has retained its market share since the onslaught of Geo in the industry. So they have still retained about uh, 30 plus revenue market share. And we do expect them to monetize their assets and to strengthen their balance sheet going forward. Currently, the ratings headroom on Bharti Airtel is low as uh, their uh, 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 FFO adjusted net leverage is very close to uh, 2.5 times where, which we consider as a threshold for negative rating action. And that is the point where we, you know, we, we could take a negative rating action if there is an intense competitive pressure and the management fails to monetize their assets. So overall, you know, stable outlook for the industry and we do expect some rationalization on tariffs should come back in 2019. 
Oh, that's on Airtel. Uh, you, you know, what is it that you're watching out for specific to Vodafone idea? Now, obviously, uh, you know, the execution and how well the management goes ahead with regards to capital raising plans, that will be a big impact for a Vodafone idea. But in an environment that is so competitive and, and where now you've got very set uh, uh, parameters into uh, very set positions who, who leads and who's, who comes second, how does Vodafone Idea fit in and if they at all have to come back into the forefront, what is it that they need to look at? So for Vodafone and Idea, they are at the last leg of their uh, integration of their uh, massive operations. Uh, this is a this is a big bang massive integration which they are still in the process of doing uh, you know the network optimization and combining different network sites is a is a huge headache for such big big companies i think what they need to do right now is to raise more funds to to strengthen their balance sheet to put in uh, to put in capex to streamline their uh, network position in comparison to Jio and Bharti Airtel, because once you lose, you start losing subscribers, and once you start losing revenue market share because of your poor quality of network, then it becomes very difficult to gain back the subscriber market share. So in our view, for them, I think right now would be to put in more capex to uh, improve the quality of the data uh, network to remove congestion from the network, to avoid any call drops on the on the network, and be at par in terms of the network quality and data quality to Jio and Bharti Airtel, and try to retain their subscriber base. Okay, so uh, with regards to, like you said, you know they need to address their coverage issues uh, as well as their capacity issues, but. Uh, you know, for a stock which probably has not done much for, from a shareholder point of view as well, uh, what is the key setback or the key drawback uh, that Vodafone Idea faces in comparison to a Bharti Airtel, aside from what you've just mentioned? Anything particularly uh, concerning for you? So from a credit point of view, uh, you know, they have a, a significant debt on their balance sheet and you know as a credit analyst i think the first thing they need to do is to get down their debt to ebitda numbers to a reasonable level of um, three to four times compared to existing number which is well ahead of eight nine times including the spectrum liabilities and they have been raising debt they have monetized their tel uh, tower assets and they announced the equity injection into the company uh, both Vodafone PLC and uh, Birla Group has, you know, sufficient funds at their disposal. They would need to continuously raise funds and put in equity into the company to invest more on the ground, uh, whether it's in the in in the 4G area or the upcoming five in the next two three years, or on the fiber broadband network. Remember, I mean. In India, we have a very uh, low amount of fiber network uh, infrastructure available. And fiber network is really critical for the 5G technology going forward. So if they are late in terms of uh, you know, investing on the capex and putting in fiber on the ground, they could also you know, miss the 5G bus in the next uh, two to three years. So they'll have to continuously invest on, on capex and at the same time strengthen then their balance sheet to retain their large subscriber base. All right, that's on uh, a Vodafone idea. Just one last uh, question with regards to Geo now. I mean, we are expecting Geo to continue to keep tariff rates in check. But aside from that, when the company has stated that its target is to acquire 50% revenue market share and perhaps a similar amount in the customer market share, what does that do to competitive intensity within the industry? And thereof, the 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 actions taken by the other players within the industry? So the one scenario which could play out is that if Geo keeps on insisting on getting a 50% revenue market share, that would mean that the Voda Idea and Bharti Airtel at some point of time would have to lose a larger revenue market share. So that could be a very negative scenario for the entire industry and you know, the tariff would remain under pressure for a very long time. 
but that's not our base case. Our base case is that once Geo achieves its 30 to 35 percent of revenue market share, it would have a limited incentive to remain aggressive in the market and to remain in the subscriber acquisition mode. Uh, given the fact that you know the current tariff structure is unsustainable, it's very low at a two dollar ARPU market which gives the revenue for the wireless industry in the vicinity of $20 billion plus, uh, it, which is only 1% of the India's GDP, and which is a very unsustainable structure in the industry. So that, you know, that scenario could be very negative. I think what we are expecting is, is our base case is that there would be some rationalization on the tariff structure in towards the mid-2019 or the third quarter. And we do expect GEO to rather than raising the headline prices, but stop providing any discounts and promotion so that effective tariff realization would increase by 5 to 10% in 2019, which would be positive for incumbents because they would be happy to follow suit. All right. <clears throat> we leave it at that. A very interesting chat there. Thanks, Nitin, for joining in. Appreciate you taking out the time. Thank you. All right, Nathan Sony, their director at Fitch Ratings and his outlook on the telecom sector. We're going to take a very short break on that note. The markets have recovered. The Nifty is up about half an odd percent. Take that break. We'll be right back. One way to do that is to collect and celebrate the life lessons of those people. Deepak Ramola, the man behind Project Fuel. Fuel stands for forward the understanding of every life lesson. His audacious mission is to immortalize the wisdom of as many people as possible. One thing I was absolutely sure about, I don't want it to be a quote on the wall. I want people to experience so the experiential part is where we use different tools and mechanisms to create one act, and the act is of making lives count. Watch his exceptional story, Pursued by Skoda, only on Bloomberg Quinn. Anything and everything about your investments. We're just a touch away. Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint.